Welcome to the Clean Truth, where we like to call bullshit on the status quo. Welcome back. We got a pretty cool show today. I'm pretty excited. Full transparency, this is the second time we've done this. <laughs> we've got uh, John Salter and Joe Selecki from Salty Dog Jiu Jitsu. How you guys doing? Uh, good. Glad yeah. to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having Welcome us. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Funny story. I'll, I'll kind of make fun of ourselves. We This was when we were kind of new at this, I think. A while think. ago, yeah. We had uh, John here and did a po- full podcast over an hour long and none of it recorded. <laughs> yeah, no but, audio. Yeah, That's that awesome. was like the dumbass me. From years ago. <laughs> There's been so many times since then, too. You've texted me and I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, me and Joe can do it and then we just never get it set up. Yeah, it's all right. Um, well, first of all, man, how are you guys doing? Good, yeah, good, good man. Just same old training, hanging, hanging in there. You guys are uh, all over the place at the moment. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, Joe just coming off a huge win. That was yeah. awesome. So t- talk about that. Let's just jump right into it. Yeah, man. it was awesome, man. Uh, we fought. I fought uh, April tenth. So what was it like it'd be three weeks ago on Saturday, um, out in Vegas, and then that was the second fight of the quarantine. And uh, yeah, I fought. A, I think what'll be a future UFC Hall of Famer. He's like kind of like our Cal Ripken. He uh, has the most fights in UFC history. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome, man. It was full circle. It was a guy I grew up watching and uh, was a fan of. And then, uh, yeah, I'm in there fighting him. It was crazy. And we were fortunate enough to get the win. It was pretty awesome. That's awesome, man. So what everybody really needs to know is <laughs> a long time ago, before I knew Joe, uh, when uh, I was in the UFC, uh, I fought the brother of the guy that he just fought. And Joe cheered against me the whole time. And Joe was there. It was in Boston. Yeah. He was there. And cheered against me, so it was very hard to not cheer for his opponent while I was there. But you know, <laughs> yeah. and the thing is, is like the way I describe it is like like the Miller brothers. They were both at the time, like you know, Jim went on to fight a lot longer, but uh, they were like a thing. Like the the brother, they always took fights on short notice, and they're from New Jersey, and I'm from New Jersey, so like I was a fan of them, especially Jim because he was smaller and I liked him. But uh, I was at, I could have been pretty much anybody against John because. He was like a big, strong wrestler, shaved head, from Alabama, like all those things. Like, like you're from the South, I'm from the North. I'm like, wrestlers always beat me in competition, and I'm the scrawniest kid around, and you're huge and jacked. Like, I'm actively cheering against this guy. Like, I was cheering for the Miller Brothers, but I was also definitely against him. <laughs> nice. That's pretty funny. So, John, when are you fighting you? Uh, I should. Uh, I think I have something coming up pretty quick that's, uh, that's big. But I don't have a contract yet, so I can't say anything about it. But should be something soon. Nice. Uh, yeah. I've been in camp, kind of getting uh, a semi-camp stay, getting in shape, being ready. So uh, should have an announcement pretty soon. Cool. It's going to be exciting. So there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that, you know, probably the majority of them, I would say, are not MMA guys. So talk about your background and kind of how you guys got to where you're at. Um, well, I, uh, I started wrestling in high school, or I'm sorry, in middle school. Uh, won a state championship in high school and then went on to wrestle in college at Lindenwood University in Missouri. Uh, won a national championship there, and uh, my roommate would never stop talking about this guy, Tito Ortiz, and made me watch videos of him all the time and finally uh, got me, in, got me uh, interested enough to say, like, I want to start training. So I started going to grad schools. So I'm going to train during that, do some fights while I'm in grad school, and I just kept going better and better and better. So then I just dove full speed into it. Um, and uh, so that, that's kind of how I got my start was that. And uh, now, you know, wrestling is my background, but now I train jiu-jitsu and uh, kickboxing more than I wrestle. So um, hopefully I'm well-rounded. Yeah, for me it's the opposite. I was like uh, sports were not my thing. Like We were not like an athletic family, you know. Uh, so I got in martial arts, like my parents were trying really hard. Uh, you know, my brother was playing baseball a little bit, like he was 10 years old or so, and uh, he was not getting playing time. And they'll tell you it was because we moved towns and town politics. Judging on how Steve is now <laughs> in jiu-jitsu, I'd say it's probably wasn't a very good athlete. But uh, so they were like, oh, put him in something individual. I was only four at the time. I really wanted to do karate because I watched the Power Rangers. And uh, so like, well, we'll throw him in there. And then when you're old enough to go to school, you can do it. And uh, just by accident, they, they got into, you know, they walked into a place that was a karate school originally. And this is 97, I think, when he started. So then, uh, you know, the instructor had been training jiu-jitsu, which, you know, that's very different than the traditional martial arts. It's like, it's grappling, it's aggressive, it's, it's realistic, but uh, they still had the gi on. So my parents didn't know the difference. So he had started training in Philly 
uh, you know, doing jiu-jitsu and bringing it back to his karate school. And then by the time I signed up two years later, he had switched the whole school over. He grandfathered those karate students in. He would still teach them traditional martial arts. But for any new members like myself, it was just jiu-jitsu. And uh, so I came up doing that, but I was awful. Like I, I would compete you know, uh, annually or a couple times a year at most as a kid, and I never won. And, uh, you know, my coach growing up would just be like, well, one day your brain will catch up to your body and, and then it'll click. And uh, around 16 or 17 it did, and then I just started becoming like the little traveling jiu-jitsu kid. I just started, every weekend I'd go somewhere and compete, you know, and then from like 16 to uh, right before I started fighting, I got like 300 jiu-jitsu matches, just competing as much as possible, and then, uh, you know, I was one of that generation that grew up watching the UFC. So I was like, if I do get good at this, I'm, I want to fight MMA. And, you know, then eventually I started fighting. That's crazy. I was actually at a a barbecue a couple weeks ago. And Josh, Andrew's buddy of mine. Oh, yeah. Who goes to to class with you guys a lot. He he was he said that because he, he said that Joe's never – it was before your fight. Mm. And um, he's like, Joe's never done any other sports. Yeah. The only thing he's ever done is jiu-jitsu. And I'm like – well, that explains a lot. I <laughs> my, mean, <laughs> my first sports jersey is my UFC fight kit. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I got to keep that as my last name on the back." I'd never had this before. This is new. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about jujitsu because I think we talked about this on the last podcast that we did, and you know, I have come and trained with you guys. I think twice, two or three times, and the one thing that I noticed from being in the room with you guys and the group of guys that you guys train with versus other places that I've gone and I'm not talking a lot of experience but I have experienced a couple others is there is no fucking egos in that room it's crazy to me when you get that many dudes in there who are that good at something usually nine times out of ten there's a couple hotheads in there and the most of the time every time I've been in there I've never experienced that there I think and I don't know if that's I would assume that's attributed to the way you guys run your I think classes. part of it is, you know, that we, we get after it pretty good. You know, it's like everybody is eventually going to run into the guy that submits them, you know, and gives them a hard time or, you know, uh, you know wears you out. Everybody's always tired because we're, we're getting after it every day. Um, so it makes it a great workout. It really is a great environment for breeding competitors, you know, so we do pretty good at tournaments. But I think the other thing is um, you get to a point when you're just grinding out with this – same guy, you know, a couple times a week. You, even if you did have an ego against them, you just get to be buddies and you start to respect uh, what they do. And I think uh, that's one thing that we have done pretty good. We don't have guys getting in fights or anything like that, um, which I've seen at other gyms and especially in wrestling rooms. Um, but I think I, I feel like we've done a pretty good job of that, and I hope it stays that way. Yeah, I think uh, I think the one thing too, especially when I came here, is the only person. I mean, you have Derek in town. He has, you know, a gym, but more MMA, more kickboxing type, and he trains out of town, I think is was him because uh, a lot of times, like I've trained at all kinds of places. You know, growing up, I only trained at one gym. And then when I moved to Myrtle Beach before I lived here, uh, I was, you know, had all kinds of different coaches and instructors. And I think the common thing was, not to say they weren't good at what they do. You know, if you make black belt in jiu-jitsu, you can teach well. You could probably grapple a little bit, even if you're not the best. But uh, I think, like I said, the ego thing, I think comes from a lot of insecurity of, not having the credentials or the accomplishment or just the, you know, the, not self-awareness, but like being secure in yourself, I guess, you know, not being insecure. Uh, and I think because he has a whole other career where you're like, oh, like he's accomplished his goals. He doesn't need to live through his students to like, and even now, like now that I get to fight in the UFC and, you know, kind of start chasing my goals, people will come in and be like, well, this other school in town said they have the best guy. You're like, okay, cool. Like, we don't care. Like, we don't have to live yeah. through... You know, it's fun to watch students go win at tournaments, but we don't live and die through their success or failure. You're like, did you have a good time? Like, I think other places, you know, if you're not actively, you know, secure and, you know, competing after your goals or did them and then you retire, like, it's easy to get caught up in, like, uh, that ego of, like, line up to me. I'm the black belt. Bow down. You're like, I'm not bowing to you. You're a grown man, you know? Right. <laughs> what about newbies? That was something I meant to ask you. I have it in my notes here is somebody who – is interested in, in jiu-jitsu, never done it before. I'm kind of being selfish because I'm asking for myself, and I've been there. I've, I've, like I said, I went a couple times a while back, and I've never came back. One, my time. I don't have the time. But now, that was that was then. That's why I never was able to do it consistently. Now, if I honestly said that, I'd be making excuses because <laughs> I have the time, but I'm like, 
I'm the kind of guy that I don't want to half-ass anything. Mm -hmm. So if I do it, I'm going to do it, and I'm all in. So what would you say if somebody, like, wanted to do this but didn't know where to start? Like, do you just come in and jump right in, or is there, like, a beginner type thing for somebody to do and then come in and, and start wrestling and grappling with guys, or is it just – sink or swim kind of thing uh, we uh really like to throw the brand new people in with uh, the toughest guys in class and just get them beat up no i'm just kidding we uh <laughs> i could we, see that <laughs> I, honestly i really could i could see your logic behind it <laughs> no what i what i like to do with new people you know even whether you got the person that says i know nothing i just want to come see it and and then i get the other side of and this is not yeah, this is just young guys thinking they know what they're doing. You know, we get a lot of Marines in, like, well, I'm a Marine, I'm trained, I know what I'm doing. And either way, I know that your knowledge base is going to be very low, um, and you might make mistakes that hurt you. So I try to keep those new people, when I say guys, but girls too, with higher belts, which sounds like, oh, I'm throwing a day one guy in with black belts, I'm being a jerk, but I'm not because I know the black belts, number one, are going to take time to teach them. They're going to be friendly and not hurt them and if you put yourself in a position that might hurt you they're going to know to let go or get you out of that position because they've been on the mat you know for however many hours you know so um that's what i usually try to do with the first week is i pick everybody's partners for them uh for the most part to make sure they go with people that are very knowledgeable that can help them and keep them from getting hurt and then after a week hopefully you kind of know enough uh especially of who to go with and stuff that you can kind of start doing it on your own how many days a week you think like or is it one of those kind of you get what you put into it type thing because i was talking again my conversation goes back to josh when we were yeah. when we were bullshitting about this and we were he was asking when i was coming back and yeah. i was like man i've been chomping at the bit i really really yeah. have and i'm not making excuses on why i haven't i just haven't been able to I and um i asked him about i asked him that question and he was like dude i just I, he said, I started going when COVID hit, and I didn't really have anything else to do. Yeah. So I was just in there every day. And he goes, I just I started to pick it up quicker. He goes, for guys that you know don't really have a lot of time, it's kind of like you get what you put into it. So I would assume that's the answer. But well, I think, like, I mean, so if you would have asked me this a couple of years ago with, like, out anything else going on in my time, like, you should be here every day, twice a day. But I think we see guys like that, and you see them – twice a day every day for like a year at most and then you never see them again you know so i think a couple times a week is probably best because then like, like we always, i always joke about josh i call him the most most interesting man in the world because he knows a little bit about a lot you know like he's like one time he's on instagram cooking stuff and he's I'm like dude you're good at everything like uh and he's pretty good at jiu-jitsu you know in, in a short time so uh i think a couple times a week you know it's just whatever you can stay consistent without burning out because uh it's really fun to watch people catch the bug of like learning and getting excited about it, but you want them to stay. I want everybody that walks in, I think is the same goal to make black belt, you know, mm -hmm. um, not just so that the school grows, but so that you can watch jujitsu is awesome. If you stick with martial arts, like you watch people just get in such good shape and they get confident and all that. And uh, it's hard to reap those rewards in a year. You know, you'll definitely start to, but in a year, you don't want somebody to do it for a year. And then 10 years from now, they're talking about, I used to train jujitsu. You want them to be like, you know, maybe they come three times a week, but for 10 years, that's awesome. You know? That's what I, whenever I get that question a lot when I'm signing people up, and I kind of give them that same thing of like, come when you want to be here. You know, if it's like if you're dragging yourself out, unless you're getting ready for competition, then it's different. You better be there training. You know, but if not, just come when you want to be there because I want people to have fun. You know, like, and that's what I I think is one thing that Joe and I kind of take an aspect of of coaching differently than some people. A lot of people like he's talking about. Uh, open gyms to kind of be the tough guy in the room you know where like i gotta remember my job is to make sure number one you get better at jiu -jitsu, and number two that you have fun doing it you know so i don't want anybody to be there hating it and uh everything like that i want people to have a good time and uh i think that's really important because you know, our, our coach in charlotte that we train under in mma i think one of his things that i uh the best line he's got is you know people over or underestimate or overestimate what they can do in a year underestimate what they can do in 10 years you know so if you're coming two to three days a week for 10 years you're going to be a monster in 10 years you know I, I mean i agree i had a blast when i was there man that's why i've been chomping a bit because it's challenging mm -hmm. you know and i mean this is going to sound retarded for me to say but there's not a lot of things that i've been physically challenged with since i quit competing in bodybuilding mm -hmm that I've actually, like, enjoyed doing. You know yeah. what I mean? I've done a lot of shit, but yeah. a lot of, like, going there, I knew I was, like, a very, very tiny little minnow in a very big <laughs> pond. And that's 
it's cool, man. It's a challenge. It, I, I can't wait to do it again. The but. awesome part is like when you see somebody like that that's been bodybuilding or this and that, like you put them with like, you know, the scrawny 16 year old and you see their eyes open up like, oh my God, people like this walk around all the time. Like there's <laughs> yeah, 10 yeah. people like, no, in the grocery store. Like, yeah, like then you're looking, you start looking around like, who knows what? Like, are, can you do what that guy did to me? And, and then it, again, you just get the bug. You're like, wow, like, I got to learn this so that I can be one of those people walking around, you know, and I feel safe. It's fun. I, I mean, I, I think about that all the time, <laughs> just in, in everyday life. I'm like, and I always have this rule. I don't really talk it about it out loud too much, but I'm like, you know, I, I've lived by this rule my entire life that you got to be able to take an ass whipping before you can give one. <laughs> and I've gotten my ass whipped many times, but I, I, I notice that, you know, like there's guys in the gym that you look at them and then. You start rolling with him, and you're like, fuck me. <laughs> I got 100 pounds on this kid, and he just rolled me over. That was pretty cool. But, um, so, <clears throat> Joe, when are you fighting again? Uh, no, nothing set yet. Uh, we got back. I'm back training now and everything, and I have to do all the terrible cardios with him now because he's getting ready for his fight. Um, so I'm just going to stay in shape, keep training really hard, and then uh, I'm hoping before the end of the summer it would be awesome. But, uh, you know, I just think uh, a couple more weeks of just getting back. Like, I like having a little time between camps because then, you know, we train just as hard. But uh, it's just time to maybe add in a couple new skills or, you know, work on some stuff that isn't geared toward a specific opponent or toward my usual game plan, which doesn't really change fight to fight too much. It'll be kind of having some fun. Like, we were spar sparring yesterday. I probably sparred almost as hard as I do before a fight. But was trying some new stuff. Maybe I switched stances for a second or throw a kick that I wouldn't normally throw. So I just think uh, a couple weeks like that and then hopefully – Hopefully here in a month or so, I'll hear something, get a contract, and fight maybe, uh, you know, late July or early August would be cool. Is there, mm-hmm. like, a rule of thumb that you're supposed to wait a certain time, or is it just kind of go off a of feel or how you feel or how you're training? Okay. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. kind of different. I think probably three fights a year is kind of perfect. Mm-hmm. But like you said, you know, I think the two things is, number one, you need that time that you're not in a camp to get better because you need to work on getting better. I think the other thing is, like you said, we train hard all the time, but there's something about knowing you're like 60, eight weeks out from a fight that your stress level goes to the roof. You're always beat down, and it's uh, it's just it's a lot harder <laughs> just dealing with everything during that yeah. time when you're getting close to a fight. It's bad. I think it's bad for your health. Yeah. <laughs> it's got it just be the stress has it. to be bad for your health. Well, you shouldn't be business. nervous that often you know, that much. Like if you guys are running a business, trying to run a school and stuff, it's – yeah, that's the thing. We we travel a lot to uh, Charlotte to train there when we're getting ready for fights. And so c- being out of the gym, uh, you know, obviously hurts, uh, you know, memberships and stuff like that, which I've got a lot of good black belts there. You know, it's, it, I, always my go-to is to have Joe teach. But if not, I've still got another, like, seven really good black belts that can cover. So it's not like we don't have good coaching when we're not there. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's not the same as not being there. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth from the school to you guys as, as fighters, but I thought about another question. So you were talking about belts a minute ago. How does that work? A lot of people don't even know how that works in martial arts. Like, how do you go up from what is it, a white belt and a blue or mm-hmm. blue purple? I don't, I don't, I'm not mm-hmm. really sure. But you go through the belts, and I'll explain, Corey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so you go for the adults. You go white, blue, purple, brown, and black. And I would say the average, from what I've always heard. Like when I was, you know, like a blue belt, purple belt, everyone always said 10 years for a black belt, but now we get these guys. It's like a new thing the last maybe five, six years where guys are like going full-time training jiu-jitsu. I don't know how they do it. It's almost like a like a cockroach. Like you can't, like, like they never they never sink where they're like homeless, but they just train jiu-jitsu full-time but don't work. So like some guys get it in five, six years, you know, but uh, I think the average pace is like 10 years from white to black belt. Um, you know, some, some gyms do stripes. Some gyms don't really keep up with it too much. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of for, for, I know for us and like all the places that I've trained where I really enjoyed it, it was kind of based on merit. So just kind of the instructors, you know, picking up, if the instructor is there every day and it's the same instructor or a handful of instructors, it should be, they should know you enough to, you know, know where you're at, you know, skill wise and, you know, be able to see your role or roll with it. You know, your instructor should be training with you periodically. Um, I've been in other gyms where you pay, you get in your stripe every three months and then. You know, after a year, you're getting your blue belt, no matter if you've been there two times a week or ten times a week. You know, uh, I don't like that as much. I think it makes it not as special. Yeah, that's you know? kind of weird. Yeah, I was, I was recently. It's like you're getting uh, it without earning it. Yeah, I've watched instructors, you know, before promote guys. They didn't know their name. Was, you're getting a stripe tonight. Like, 
tell me one thing that he does well that he's getting like they can't feel good to that person when you go uh you uh, tell me your name again yeah you're getting a stripe like if you don't know my name you probably don't know what i know on the mat you know so uh i think i think it's good when you get it kind of as a surprise i, I like that yeah and uh you know like he's talking about there's places where they're very strict and regimented like i don't know what you do but you've been here this much so you get this stripe you know and typically for people on all stripes are you get four stripes before you go up to the next belt now not at our gym because i'm just too forgetful to give stripes so <laughs> i've just given up on it but i still give belts out um but uh you know, and, uh, but then we also, we got, you, know, you get your occasional freaks, like, you know, Corey Crumpler, um, that just didn't want another belt uh, and didn't want to wear a belt uh, until he got uh, got his black belt. So I gave him a kid's belt, an orange belt, and he wore it with pride for uh, for a while. And when yeah. people would ask him what belt level he is, he would tell them he was an orange belt. Yeah. And um, <laughs> would yeah. t- wear it in pictures. People would freak out and get – most gyms are very strict on – you wear your belt. You don't ever put a belt on that's not your color. You don't – like some gyms are even to the point, like if a black belt's belt's laying on the mat, you don't touch it. It's just <laughs> the dumbest thing in the world. It's a belt. Move my belt. Um, but, uh, but yeah, with uh, I, I gave really more because I thought it would be funny, and then I knew people would get mad if I gave Corey his orange belt. And I don't know how many times I've posted pictures online of, like, Corey wearing his orange belt, and people are like, why is there a grown man wearing yeah. an orange belt? Or the uh – He's beaten some very high-level black belts that have come through <laughs> yeah. while wearing his orange belt. Or no gi, no belt. And they'll look at him and be like, man, what belt do you? And him, in only a way that Corey can, is he got orange. Without, like, <laughs> no smile, no nothing. Doesn't tell him how long he's been training. Just goes, I'm an orange belt, and walks away. And you just see this person's mind explode. Like, how? Does, no, like, I don't even know this guy. How did he just beat me? <laughs> the funniest thing he did was uh, after I gave him his black belt, um, it wasn't much longer. We had a guy sign up that is one of our favorite members now, um, and he was rolling with Corey, and he's got four daughters. And uh, his four daughters came in and was watching practice, and Corey hogtied him with his own belt and made his daughters come on time. But anyway, he asked Corey, he goes, uh, what belt are you? And Corey just said orange and walked away. Well, the guy's a new white belt, you know, and he's like, oh, okay. So he's talking to his friends. He's like, this guy hogtied me with his belt the other day, or with my belt the other day. It was unbelievable. And they're like, what belt level is he? And he said, uh, he's an orange belt. <laughs> and, uh, and all of his friends started making fun of him. Like, there's not an orange belt. You're just making this up. And he came back into the gym. He's like, you told me you're an orange belt. That's not a thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, your wife trains. Yeah. Did your wife train? No, no, no. <laughs> One class, it did not go well. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I think that's awesome. How many women are in the school? Uh, we've probably got about 12, 12 women now, probably about five or six very consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, and my wife, uh, just uh, five and a half weeks ago, we had our daughter. So she's not back training yet, but um, she, she'll be back in training in probably a, a week or so congratulations thank brother. you thank you appreciate that and yeah. i was getting ready to give her her purple belt and she decided she didn't want her purple belt she was going to make her own belt a unicorn belt and tie dyed it and i just figured it wasn't worth the fight so now she's a unicorn belt Break that's, a lot of the rules at the gym. surprisingly that's not a thing either <laughs> yeah. i think that would mentally bother me be just the fact that there's and there's She's no good. like criteria for it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just a subjective thing. I'm used to it with bodybuilding. That's what there it is, is a lot of men that she beats, <laughs> like who compete. You know, and, and oh, it's so fun to watch them get very frustrated. Just imagine <laughs> getting beaten by a unicorn belt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And she would definitely say it like that. Like, oh no, I'm just a unicorn belt. Yep. I wrestled in high school. We had a couple girls on our wrestling team that were legit. Yeah. And they to to watch them wrestle guys, high school men was pretty entertaining when they would beat them. It was pretty comical i i may or may not be a bully i've kind of accepted that i probably am but one of my favorite times ever wrestling is we were wrestling in a tournament in virginia and uh, one of the guy the hotheads on my high school team it's so easy to get him mad was wrestling because we wrestling a girl that night and all day i talked about how good she was and it's like i just i don't think you can beat her i knew nothing about the girl but i just knew he was wrestling a girl and i was like i just man, I really don't think you can beat this girl. Like, you're going to have to be really careful. And he was, like, trying, ready to fight me all day. And I'm like, man, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just I'm worried about you. And I've never seen a girl get her face slammed in the mat oh. so many oh. times, so hard. That poor girl doesn't know me but got beat up because of me. <laughs> Crazy. That's downright mean, dude. <laughs> 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 
Well, this was fun, man. I appreciate you guys coming. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell everybody how to find the the school? Or I, I mean, it's local here in Wilmington, but yeah, uh, Salty Dog Jiu Jitsu on uh, Instagram, and uh, you can shoot me a message there, and I can uh, help you find it. It's on uh, if you're in Wilmington, it's right off uh, Green Meadows Drive on Windmill Way. Um, so not too hard to find Ralph Market Street. Instagram, Facebook, uh, for you guys. I mean, guys, if you if you if you're not following John and Joe, I, I I encourage you to follow these guys, man. I mean, not only are they, you know, awesome fighters, but they're two of the most humblest dudes that I've been around. So these guys are, are worth following and, and 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 keeping track of. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm just on Instagram at Joe Selecki, and uh, if you want to see pictures of dogs and the occasional fighting picture. That's about what I'm good for. Uh, Facebook, I got, I think, Joe Selecki MMA, like an athlete page, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I don't really do do too much on there. Just, you know, it's boring. We train, we hang out, that's it. <laughs> Dude is cool as a cucumber, man. Like, every post-fight interview that I've ever watched you do, it's almost, it reminds me of a guy I know back home in Edwardsville called Rich Putnick. I don't, you may have know Rich from training around the St. Louis area, but... I know that name. He was an Edwardsville basketball player, and then after high school... He got into strongman. And this dude was one of the most impressive strength athletes that I've still to this day I've ever seen. But when it, when it comes to accolades, the dude would go win strongman competitions and then come up and be like, hey, man, you ready to go? <laughs> I'm like, dude, you don't want to enjoy this? He's like, nah, I got shit to do. I'm like, that's awesome. That's what that reminds me of. Every time I, I watch him interview after a fight, I'm like, that dude is cool as a cucumber. <laughs> I try not to take it too serious anymore. I used to take it too serious, and now it's like, hmm. I mean, it's, it's super important to me, but it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I'm trying to remember that. Now, before the fight, I don't feel that way. Once we're <laughs> out there, we have fun, and then it's time to go home. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. This was, this was oh, fun. Thank, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank Appreciate you, man. Until next time.